For the last week of April 2019, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of things environmental, ecological, recycling-wise across the Mid-South and beyond. So if you've got anything out there that you would like people to know about, we'd love to tell them about it when it comes to keeping the Mid-South clean, green, and healthy. There's a lot going on out there in many different groups, and we'll take a look at some of those activities coming up here relatively soon, so stay tuned for more on that. This started again many years ago back in Topeka County. Kansas. We're continuing the efforts on the internet to keep you advised as to what's going on out there when it comes to all things environmental. And again, if you ha have anything to let us know about so we can tell everybody else, please drop us a line again at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'd love to know more about what you've got out there and what's happening in the near future so we can pass that along to everybody. Coming up in just a little bit, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different things, some new and exciting news from Google Maps to where you're going to be able to access more information about electric charging stations. They're going to be a lot more easier to find instead of just hunting and pecking and writing them down across the Mid-South area and points beyond on that. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Plus, again, local events of what you may consider to, again, be getting out, getting your hands dirty, picking up some trash, cleaning up some activities out there. We'll talk about that as well. Also talk a little bit more about air quality in the Mid-South, a whole bunch more information on that. Plus, we're going to talk about this, which doesn't really technically affect the atmosphere in its own way, but again, preparing for possibility of disaster. Asteroid Day is coming in just about two months. What is that all about, and what are we going to be looking for as we go throughout the next couple of weeks. We'll also take a look at how many acres of rainforest space have been saved coming up here in just a little bit. Quick view from NASA from Ustream. If you've ever had a chance to watch this, the International Space Station has cameras on the exterior of the habitat in space, and you can see what the astronauts see by looking out of the window. Kind of a nice little reminder of our spaceship Earth and how we need to keep it all clean and safe. So again, a good opportunity to see more about what the astronauts are seeing up there and a great opportunity to learn more about what goes on in space while we study what happens here on the big blue marble as well and how we can use that information to move farther out into space as we approach places like Mars and other planets in the semi near future hopefully. Uh, pollen across the area over the course of the next few days looks like unfortunately that is going to be heading back upwards again as we get into around midweek and then hold relatively steady before or more rainfall comes in and washes things out. So it would be nice to be able to see that kind of drop down and go fairly low at this time, but it does not look like that's going to be happening, peaking again as we go into the course of the next few days. What we're also looking for at this time is again more pollution out there and that's going to be stacking up in the next few days now it has been pretty nice out there for right now for the weekend itself that we're recording this on we've had again some decent air quality for now but in the semi near future it looks like we're going to be picking up even more pollen and more pollution as the atmosphere gets a little bit more stagnant out there it doesn't look like it's too bad but we'll keep you updated on that over the course of the next few days all right really cool to take a look at what goes on out there this is going to be one of our links of the week. It's from the Environmental Protection Agency, the Air Data Air Quality Monitors. As you can see, more about what goes on here in the Mid-South and beyond. Different types of detectors to where you can see what is being detected and what that information does so we can get more details about how our fossil fuels and all the particulates in the atmosphere can affect us. And there's a ton of information available on here all the way across the United States again into and around the area with numerous different types of detectors out there and we'll link this to our page so you can see a little bit more about how we study that information out there all right electric vehicles they were kind of a joke back in the 60s and 70s being able to go not too far but now that the technology has been changing for the better we are looking again at a lot of opportunities for new styles and new uses for these cars from commutes to hauling uh, cargo and also again to keep the amount of fossil fuels out of the atmosphere. There's a lot of price guides online. This one from 2017 from greencarreports.com to help you make up your mind a little bit more if this is something in your semi near future. Costs, benefits, analysis, different companies, links, websites, all kinds of great information about the different types of vehicles that no longer use fossil fuels 
Unfortunately, we still use some fossil fuels to create the energy to run some of these cars, and some of them do take a decent amount of time to actually charge out there. But the good thing is that is also being reduced. How long does it take? to charge an electric vehicle. Some cars you can add up to 100 miles of range with a 50 kilowatt rapid charger. And that's again some good news for people who use these for long distance. Good opportunity to learn more about what's out there by searching around for the different car companies that offer them. Uh, I've been in contact with Ford Motor Company myself to take a look and see what they have available, which unfortunately is not much. And apparently right now Ford is not considering anything in the way of an electric Mustang, which is a very big pity because that's something I would consider myself a future customer uh, somewhere down the line, if at all possible. But if you'd like to see more about stuff like this, tons of websites available, including plugincars.com slash cars for updates on various price ranges and information, and also the longest range vehicles available out there from motorone.com and many other places. But this is the big news of the week. Google Maps adding information about electric charging station locations. And as you can see, just right around the downtown Memphis area on Google Maps, Maps, you can see that there is quite a few of them in downtown and midtown from I-240 back toward Mud Island and the Mississippi River. Taking this and going up a little bit farther, you can see that there are decent amounts of them around portions of the metro area. Not too many of them showing up uh, specifically in the midtown area, but we are getting quite a few of them back to East Memphis, Bartlett, into Cordova in that area. And again, you can search your particular zip code or where exactly you may be heading to to discover where those charging stations will be. You can even tell who's using them and how much time there is left on charging their vehicles. So you don't have to sit around and wait for things like that. Clean Memphis, again, 30 days of Earth Day going on and got a lot of activity uh, happening in the next few days and weeks, including Loving Local 2019, learning more about Project Green Fork and how it can help to reduce food waste in the Mid-South area. More about that from the folks at Clean Memphis at cleanmemphis.org for more information. You can get more details about new updates on events from the Wolf River Conservancy including their Saturday service project, which will be coming up the 11th of May, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. There'll be more information about that. But for more details, you can go to wolfriver.org to find out more about how they're practicing ecology cleanups and promoting that to the younger generations out there as well. Wolfriver.org for some more information about what's going on there. Rainforest site, again, got a lot of great news to take a look at for right now, including how to give back by making certain you donate by just viewing some ads and we're going to do that right now we're just going to click on the button the ads are going to pop up and then we're going to again just because we viewed the ads that you see on screen that's going to help to save rainforest space how much rainforest space have we saved well, we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Asteroid Day is coming up in the course of the next two months and if you'd like to know more about the United Nations efforts to promote information about protection, detection, and study of asteroids in our solar system. There's about 650,000 meteors and comets and asteroids that we know about. The problem is the ones that we do not know about, so we need to be able to study those. And if you'd like to know more about how we are working on that, asteroidday.org great opportunity to learn more about what's going on out there in the solar system and of course we'll bring you updates on that coming up over the course of the next couple of weeks to get you introduced to this and maybe hopefully talk up science in your community your place of worship also to your elected leaders to tell them that this is a very important thing all right for the rainforest space through the last several months, we have seen, again, some pretty good amounts of clicks taking place. 6.2 million, which means 136 million square feet of rainforest space have been saved. That's 2,123 acres. So very good news on that. But we've got a long ways to go and a lot of rainforest space to protect because a lot of that is, again, being turned into farmland. And we need those plants in those areas to help recycle 
the air that we breathe on this planet. It doesn't come in from another dimension. We need to have a lot of this clean air recycled in the rainforest space out there. That'll do it for this week. Heading into May, we'll have more information coming up next week about a whole bunch of different range of topics. Again, email me with more information about what's going on with your group, and we'll pass it along here. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition for the last week of April. This is News Channel 3's Your Environment.